welcome to Meet the Authors with your host, Bill Levin. This is a show about Mississippi authors, featuring writers and writing productions and people associated with literature, like book owners and store owners and people who promote writing. Today we have three guests for, for us to enjoy. We have Frank Willem, who's the author of several adventure books. He'll be talking about his, uh, his series, uh, Tears of Corral, followed up by Al Socha, Real Treat, who is our ambassador for Moonshine for the state of Mississippi. And our third guest is going to be Dan Ellis. Dan Ellis has written a whole slew of books all about the coast, a lot of history in here that's very, very fascinating. I'm sure you'll all be delighted. Mississippi has a long history of authors promoting literature from Eudora Welty through Tennessee Williams on to John Grissom. And here on Meet the Authors, you have a chance to meet all the new authors and the new progress that we're making. So right after this message, we'll get started with our first guest. Imagine an era of renewed prosperity, underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. A scientist, a shrimper, a historic hotel guest, an artist, a grocer, a famous TV chef. Be what you want to be. Learn what it's like to be me. Play house in the trees, travel the seas, see new sights, reach new heights, discover friends, discover fun. Lynn Meadows for children and everyone. Discover all Lynn Meadows Discovery Center has to offer at lmdc.org. Hi, I'm Dan Ellis from Fast Push the End. I would like to invite you to a special conference that we are putting on. It will be the weekend of September 28, 29, and 30. With it, it's regarding the Old Spanish Trail, and anyone who's an enthusiast on this will know that we have some great folks that will be participating, particularly we feature Charles Sullivan, and he is dynamic. How you doing? It's the doctor. Yeah, and I am the doctor, the doctor who writes. And I'm having a grand time today selling a lot of my books. And my best book is this one, The Tides of Mississippi. Six first place awards across the region, and I'm really, really proud of it. It's doing very well. Well, congratulations for such an honor. Thanks you know. so much. Imagine. An era of renewed prosperity, underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. Welcome back to Meet the Authors with your host, Philip Levin. So we're here today with Frank Willem. We're very excited to have Frank here. Frank's been on the coast since 1978. He's uh, practically native and has a long history of being here with so many people in his business and fishing. You can see from his cap, he's a renowned fisherman. I remember I went to his uh, first book signing. Oh, it was just about three or four years ago, and he had hundreds of people there to get autographed copies of his books. His books are great, very successful, wonderful reads, uh, adventure stories. So tell us, Frank, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get to, uh, to the coast and how you became interested in being a writer? Well, you did such a great job. I, I, I probably ought to just leave it there. <laughs> but no, we, uh, I was, of course, uh, interested in writing for a long time. I, I read Hemingway back when I was a boy. I probably read The Old Man in the Sea a dozen times. And uh, when I would travel with business, uh, of course, you have long periods of time in lobbies of airports and that sort of thing. And so I start writing scenes, and uh, I would write uh, about whatever happened to come to my mind. And I found it just kind of relaxing. And I had no end game in mind. I just wrote the scenes and filled up notebooks. 
Well, when we sold our company Triton Systems, then uh, I finally had the time to take some of those scenes and put them together. And out of that came my first book, The Keys. Uh, and that was basically uh, built on the premise of uh, many of us have thought at times in our life uh, about just getting in the car and leaving and going somewhere. And I thought it'd be interesting to have a character actually do that. And so from there, the, then I had a sequence of three more books that, uh, that kind of played off the same characters. That's wonderful. The stories are very easy to follow and very adventuresome. I really enjoy, have read them all. I really like them. They're, they're just so exciting and they, they really have great thrills to the adventure story. So you published your first book. Uh, when? When was the first one published? I believe it was 2010. Okay. And so uh, you now have four out. Mm -hmm. And correct. when does uh, you have a fifth one in mind? The fifth one, I, I bought a television production company, and since I bought that two and a half years ago, I pretty much haven't had a chance to finish writing. The fifth book is probably three-fourths of the way done, and I've got two non-fiction books that are done. I just haven't, haven't had the, uh, the bandwidth to launch them yet. Non-fiction, what are they about? Well, one is the Triton story, the story of how we built our company from $500 to a $100 million company. And the second one is basically a collection of uh, blog posts and short stories, that sort of thing. Most of them are, of which are true, but they're just short, fun stories. Wow. You have a very successful uh, adventure bringing that company up to such a, a successful launch. So how about you read a little bit of something? We'd love to hear about uh, hear a little segment from your book and get a feel for your writing style. All right. Well, the, uh, the last three of the books, The Pass, uh, The Errol, and then Tears of Coral, all three of those are fiction books, but they're based on a non-fiction premise. Uh, the past was based upon um, an incident that happened in the 50s where a nuclear weapon was jettisoned off the coast of Savannah and it's still there today. And that was interesting because you, this is Mississippi authors. Turns out that uh, after the book came out, the Mississippi Business Journal did an article on it and I got a call from um, a man, Dan Fordyce, the son of uh, our former governor and told me that the bomber pilot that had dropped the nuclear weapon off Savannah and is still there today uh, was from Mississippi and was still living and I had a chance to meet him. His name's Howard Richardson living in Jackson. I thought that was pretty interesting. But the, uh, the, the, the next book, The Errol Sea, was uh, basically the inspiration of that came from a uh, picture I saw online of a fleet of fishing boats rusting away in the middle of a desert. And of course, uh, the question comes to my mind, boats are not normally found in a desert. We'll come to find out that uh, it's probably the largest environmental man-made disaster in the history of the world. No one's heard of it to, for the most part. And the Soviets had, had, had uh, dammed up two of the main tributaries of the Aral Sea and shrunk it by 75%. So that was sort of the, uh, the, the thing that led to the, the genesis of this book. And I'll just read you a little bit of the, of the, uh, the, the prologue. Dean remained motionless, peering through the ship's portal across the surrounding Uzbekistan desert. The thud of the hulking figure slinging a sledgehammer on the bow of the next ship over had awakened him from his shallow sleep. Probably a scrapper looking for some piece of overlooked junk to trade for a loaf of bread. But it was the antique rifle, some sort of blunderbuss looking weapon slung over the man's shoulder that worried Dean. The last thing he wanted was to catch a bullet from a chance encounter with an innocent. Then have the nearby villagers, drawn by the boom and the man's old cannon, come marching out after him armed with knives and pitchforks. The next to the last thing Dean wanted was to kill one of the remaining locals guilty only of having the misfortune to live in this godforsaken hellhole. Of course, before long, most of them living nearby would be dead from the cancer or one of the many other diseases run, running rampant. Dean cursed himself for remaining on the bridge of the rusted fishing trawler. It had been a mistake to opt for the chance of a slight breeze through the broken out window rather than the safety of the stifling hull below decks. Now he was trapped. And then it goes on. From That's there. a great story. I see you have an IP award. The yes. IP is given for independent publishers, and it's a very prestigious award to get this IP. Thing. So that's, that's great. We really have enjoyed hearing. Where can, where can people find your books? Uh, they can go online to my website, frank, frankwillem.com, or, or also on Amazon. All the books are available as e-books or as hard copy books. And they're also available, I think, at some of the local bookstores. I know that uh, Southern Bound Books uh, carries your books mm -hmm. as well. And uh, are they available at uh, Barnes & Nobles? Uh, not the Barnes & Nobles, but uh, Triple Day downtown's got them, and as you said, Southern Bound. So we're very happy to have had Frank Willem at our, as our guest. And uh, after the break, we'll bring up our next guest, Al Sosha, who has a uh, reputation and books about moonshine here in the South. Great historical uh, revelations. So 
Stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages with our next guest on Meet the Authors. Imagine an era of renewed prosperity, underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. A scientist, a shrimper, a historic hotel guest, an artist, a grocer, a famous TV chef. Be what you want to be. Learn what it's like to be me. Play house in the trees, travel the seas, see new sights, reach new heights, discover friends, discover fun. Lynn Meadows for children and everyone. Discover all Lynn Meadows Discovery Center has to offer at lmdc.org. Hi, I'm Dan Ellis from Fast Christian. I would like to invite you to a special conference that we are putting on. It will be the weekend of September 28, 29, and 30. With it, it's regarding the Old Spanish Trail, and anyone who's an enthusiast on this will know that we have some great folks that will be participating, particularly we feature Charles Sullivan, and he is dynamic. How you doing? It's the doctor. Yeah, and I am the doctor, the doctor who writes. And I'm having a grand time today selling a lot of my books. And my best book is this one, The Tides of Mississippi. Six first place awards across the region, and I'm really, really proud of it. It's doing very well. Well, congratulations for such an honor. Thanks you know. so much. Imagine. An era of renewed prosperity, underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. Welcome back to Meet the Authors with Philip Levin. I'm honored to have as our second guest on today's segment, Al Sosha. Al Sosha here from the Kiln, who has a long history to talk to us about moonshine in Mississippi. He is the expert recognized by the legislature with a special honor, and he's going to tell us about how he's researched the beginnings of moonshine and this wonderful book he's written called The Moonshine Book. It's now in its 10th edition. So, with no further ado, Al, tell us about moonshine in Mississippi. <laughs> well, folks, moonshine came in Mississippi in 1699 to this very spot that we're sitting in, sitting in right now. Excuse me. And all of my work is about moonshine legends in Mississippi. And 1699, Iberville Lemoyne came to the colony of Biloxi, and he set up right here. And my ancestor made the first moonshine in Biloxi and in Bay St. Louis back in 1699, and we've been making whiskey ever since. What was the name of your first uh, of your ancestor? Jean B Jean Baptiste Sochet, J. B. Sochet. Great. And he he got the first land grant to settle on Bay St. Louis as a, a you know a, a land grant settler. So he is the first family to hit Bay St. Louis. All of my work is around the stories connected to Kill, Mississippi, which is world-renowned for moonshine. There's been all kind of events, significant events with people and, and, event, and things that have happened uh, with moonshine in Kill, Mississippi. What kind of events? Well, like uh, John F. Kennedy's daddy, Joe, bought a thousand gallons of moonshine from us back in the day. Wow. He had killing moonshine all over Europe. Huh. He was selling it because it's a hundred proof, you see. And so that's one of the events. And of course, uh, we had a, a, a famous football player to come down there and 
have his Super Bowl party in the kill <laughs> at the old broke folks bar. You see, uh -huh. so there's all kind of events that. And uh, another thing Kill's famous for is that these little bitty family whiskey seals have produced over a million gallons of moonshine in the last 300 years. That is great. And so there's all kind of pretty good things that have happened. Kill Mississippi began back in the 1770s with the collapse of the French Empire. So New Orleans collapsed and it went to the uh, Spanish and then Mobile collapsed to the English, you see. So uh, people left those horrible places where they were having all the killings and robberies. All the French people lost all their possessions and they escaped with their life. And their moonshine. And, and their <laughs> moonshine. Well, moonshine was for medical purposes until, night, and until the 1900s. I always believe that, that moonshine is good for medical purposes. I recommend it to all my patients. <laughs> so tell us, I mean, you know, you had a lot of adventures. I remember you telling me about going up to the Jack Daniels uh, Brewery and, tell, and uh, dealing with the people up there. Tell me about that little Absolutely. story. Absolutely. Jack Daniels had given away land deeds for 50 years right now. Well, folks, when you buy my Moonshine book, you get a land deed to Moonshine Valley. There's none <laughs> more valuable in the whole wide world. <laughs> so anyhow, I really enjoyed my time up there at Jack Daniels looking at all that stuff. And on the subject of whiskey like that, we now have a legal distillery in Kill, Mississippi. Matthew Crittenden is our new distiller. And he's doing a fantastic job filling those whiskey barrels with some good old kill whiskey. That is a great story. Glad to hear about that. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Tell us about the research you did to put this book together. I've looked through this book, and there's some wonderful pictures and great little stories and so much historical data. Tell me where you gathered all this stuff. Well, I gathered all that stuff from my life. All, all of the work is about my experiences, my grandpa. Uh, my daddy, all through the family, you know. And so uh, some of it came from Frenchmen and French ways of the Mississippi Valley, you know, some of the work did. But uh, mainly, th these are stories from people that I know, that I, I grew up with, family, friends, business people, and all that, you know, over the over time. So have you ever distilled moonshine yourself? Have you ever worked with a still in your family? No, I, I never did, but my whole family did. Mm -hmm. Now the revenue, believe it or not, had a history, had a hit on me for moonshining. Hmm. And back in the day, there's a federal order by the federal judge in Biloxi telling me, telling the revenues to go get me, put me in jail. <laughs> for, for moonshine, and I wasn't moonshining, but they thought I was because of my association with a large, with a family that created the largest super still in the South in 1950. What what so, family was that? That was the Schubert family. Ah, the Schuberts, yeah. Yeah, the Schuberts from Bay St. Louis, and uh, Ramsey Cameron is actually the man that created the still. He and Junior Bayless had the largest super still in the nation. Well, that's, yeah. well, those are wonderful stories. Now, don't forget, pick up your copy of the Moonshine uh, book by Al. Where can the people find this book? Uh, my book is available online, alsochet.com, or Moonshine. Uh, yeah, you just go to alsochet.com, and it'll come up buy, under Buy Books. All right. Well, and as then up and down the coast, at, you know, at, at the Lighthouse Visitor Center, at the uh, the Biloxi store, one you just yeah, mentioned. Southbound Books. Southbound Books has it. Uh, Dempsey's and the Kill has it. My my books are all Bay Books in Bay St. Louis. They have it. That's great. It's available all over the coast. Yeah. Thank you, Al. It's been a great delight to talk with you and have you share your stories. I hope everyone can purchase your book. Stay tuned. After the break, we have our third and final guest for this segment today will be Dan Ellis, who has written a slew of wonderful history books about Mississippi. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Imagine an era of renewed prosperity, underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. 
So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. A scientist, a shrimper, a historic hotel guest, an artist, a grocer, a famous TV chef. Be what you want to be. Learn what it's like to be me. Play house in the trees, travel the seas, see new sights, reach new heights, discover friends, discover fun. Lynn Meadows for children and everyone. Discover all Lynn Meadows Discovery Center has to offer at lmdc.org. Hi, I'm Dan Ellis from Fast Christiane. I would like to invite you to a special conference that we are putting on. It will be the weekend of September 28, 29, and 30. With it, it's regarding the Old Spanish Trail, and anyone who's an enthusiast on this will know that we have some great folks that will be participating, particularly we feature Charles Sullivan, and he is dynamic. How you doing? It's the doctor. I'm the, man. I'm the doctor, the doctor who writes. And I'm having a grand time today selling a lot of my books. And my best book is this one, The Tides of Mississippi. Six first place awards across the region. And I'm really, really proud of it. It's doing very well. Well, congratulations for such an honor. Thanks you know. so much. Imagine an era of renewed prosperity, underwritten by a job-creating economic stimulus, powered by abundant clean energy sources. America's clean energy sector already employs more people than the oil and gas fields. So imagine the jobs that would be created if we got serious. This is our future, America. This is the plan. Visit citizensclimatelobby.org. Working together, we can build a better, more prosperous future. Welcome back to Meet the Authors with your host, me, Philip Levin. Nice to have you with us again. This is our third segment of today's show, and I'm very happy to present a local historian who's published 30 books, 30 books about the history of Mississippi Coast, Dan Ellis. So Dan, welcome to our show, and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became so interested in being a historian. Well, I thank you, and I really welcome to be here. It's a fine operation that they have. I've enjoyed <laughs> looking at it. Uh, as far as my writing is concerned, I started uh, primarily when I became a full-time uh, resident in, uh, on the coast. Which was when? Uh, 95. However, I owned my house uh, since 1972. But there's a big difference between being a uh, uh, person having two homes, one in New Orleans and one in uh, the past. But when I became full-time in past Christianity, it's when I decided to start writing. My first book was on Diamond Head. So a lot of folks said, well, why Diamond Head? Even the folks in Diamond Head, they said, why Diamond Head? Because they only had their existence for 25 years, but uh, I said, hey, one day it's going to be history. Mm -hmm. Now they're all asking for more on the book. <laughs> well, that's great. So you did Diamond Head. I see you've done a lot of other local books. We have here four of your books. We have here... Uh, Those are the most recent ones. The most recent one. Tell us a little bit about... Uh, on Delisle. Uh, Delisle was an interesting book and in putting together. A number of people asked me to uh, write on it, and I found that uh, I did have enough that I could glean from uh, my websites and from uh, other books. And for that one, I created a uh, special little use. I used Facebook to get more people involved, and they started sending me their photos, hmm. and that's how I was able to fill up the book. That's a 440-page book. That's a thick book. It really has a lot of information and a lot of photos and a lot of stories. Yeah, and those books people. still only sell for $25. I don't try to charge more than that. Uh-huh. And uh, so you have four recent books here. Let's see what else we have. Old Spanish Trail. Tell me about the Old Spanish Trail. What was that and what was it about? Okay, that one becomes even more interesting because it's dynamic in the sense that uh, we're, we're in the process of celebrating the 100 years of the Old Spanish Trail. It was actually started by a little lady out of Texas by the name of Charlotte, 
and we've gone through three, year, three uh, different annuals of conferences. In Pass Christiane, I put that one together because we're going to actually have a conference in Pass Christiane in September for the Old Spanish Trail to invite all of the different communities along the Gulf Coast and also going into Mobile and New Orleans. So tell see. me about the Old Spanish Trail. It started at the co east coast of Florida and went St. all... St. Augustine, Florida to San Diego, uh, California. Wow, all the way across the country. Yeah, 3,000 miles. And this book details every aspect of it, all the way up to the, uh, up to the California coast. Yeah, it does. And wow, that, what fun, what fun. And, and look, you have so many books. How long does it take you to put a book together? Well, it depends on whether or not I already have a treasure trove in other books. Because I have so many different books, I, I'm able to pull them and glean them from uh, existing books on my websites. But the interstate, uh, the interstate, the internet has gotten to the point where it's, uh, it can help supply a lot of information that in the past it was necessary to go somewhere to get it. Now, you can, a lot of this information can be gleaned and picked up from the internet. Yeah, I have a funny story about that. My mother was an author, and uh, I was showing her the internet at one, when it was still very young, very infancy, and she was going through and she said, oh my gosh, you can get anything you want to know. Why do we even need authors anymore? <laughs> She's right. Yeah, well, you still need authors. Still need well, authors. Well, it, it affects the book sales for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this is a very interesting book. I was thumbing through this on the break, and it talks about uh, the, the, his the history of uh, African Americans in past Christian. Tell me a little bit about that. That one is a new one. Uh, although I, I, all of my books have a little bit about the uh, beginnings of uh, past Christian history, which quite a few people have realized that, uh, that the early... Uh, ownership of the downtown of Pass Christian was by blacks, freed, uh, freed black slaves. And uh, from there, th uh, there have been many, many families that uh, have grown from it. And the whole area of Pass Christian and Delille are folks that uh, have not been heard of. And so I decided to put them down in a book. That is wonderful. Your books are just interesting. All these different topics from all over the, the countryside it's, uh, and the, the whole history is amazing. Right. And, and what's your next project? Are you working on a new book now? I'm doing a, uh, a redo on the mansions along the uh, scenic drive in Pass Christian. Oh, that's... We lost so many of them with Katrina. Mm. And a lot of, uh, because we've lost so much, I'm trying to recapture that and put it back together. You have photos of all the pictures? I have a lot of photos, yeah. And stories about the people who built them and such like that, huh? You're right. Well, that's a great book. Your books are always so interesting for those who, from the coast, who knew the families and, uh, and re evolved the history. It's really, uh, they're great, great historical books. I remember I was with you at a recent book signing, and you had a, a table just full of books. You must have had like 20 different books out there. And I didn't sell one. Oh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was an interesting thing. You know, it depends on where... Uh, and whether someone knows you or not, sometimes it's hot and sometimes it's not. Yes, I've had that experience myself as a seller. So uh, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, we're looking forward to reading more of your books. Where can people buy your books? Mostly from Amazon. Unfortunately, and, and you, as well as you know, anybody who's a writer of books today, we lost all of our bookstores. Mm -hmm. The bookstores that I, that I used to be able to sell books through and I sell hundreds and hundreds of books, they're just not there anymore. Mm. And uh, some of them say, well, they died because of Amazon. You don't know whether it's the chicken or the egg story. But right now, if somebody wants my books, they can get it from Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Books A Billion. And uh, they can also get it off of Kindle. Well, Dan, we certainly appreciate you coming on, on board for us for this uh, segment of Meet the Authors by and with Dr. Philip Levin, your host. And we're looking forward uh, for meeting more of your books. I Wonderful. hope all of you will join us next time when we have more guests to join us here on Meet the Authors. We have a lot of very interesting guests coming on, librarians, and we have bookstore owners, and we have, of course, more local authors to present. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you next time here on our local station. And Paul, you do a great job. <laughs>